hey you guys welcome back to the channel it's trey and i want to talk about batgirl because i got problems with batgirl and I, and um dc has literally made me aggravated with the character uh, um with the whole entire batgirl history persona all of it all of it i am just over batgirl <laughs> and it's sad because Batgirl, in theory, is pretty well, you know, cool, right? A cool design, a cool little thing that they that they did for the Batman 60 show that then became continuity. And it worked. It worked for what it was. And then DC got stupid. You know, DC got a little stupid with the character and it's just been just a, a lot of dumb choices one after another to be honest and i just don't get it so as you guys know um that girl has started production yesterday i believe or it's in production right now and then of course you know the first thing we get to see is officer barbara gordon why is barbara gordon an officer I mean, yeah, she does in, in certain timelines. She become the commissioner um, of Gotham City, and that's great. That's fine, or whatever. Um, do you boo? But why is the first time we're meeting Barbara Gordon? She's an officer, so you're already going straight off of the whole. Um, let's just do whatever the hell we want to with the character and screw anything about the character. Why she's not like a, a librarian? or some kind of profession, you know, some, something else that's not uh, an officer. And you think I'm supposed to believe that Leslie Grace is going to be able to get enough muscle, muscle mass to be a cop? No, she's too goddamn skinny. She's too damn skinny and thin for me to believe that she's an officer. Even if you want to be like, oh, she's a rookie. Nah, she just, she she's not believable as barbara gordon any damn way and you already race swapped the damn character any goddamn way like <laughs> you can't even give me what barbara gordon does as occupation which isn't being a police officer she is literally a, a librarian for the gotham um the gotham was it gotham tech or gotham the gotham city um library and she knows everything because she's such a book smart and she has this amazing photographic memory. So why are we doing that? It, like she should be book smart, not, oh, I want to work in a police officer because my dad is an officer. Nah, nah, even adult Barbara Gordon was would be doing something with books or tech. I would believe more of her being working as a tech in a tech firm or being a broker or something like that which you know funny we we talk about that but she need to do something but being a police officers ain't one of them i mean you already messed up with the whole race change and then there are people like oh i hope it'd be good i mean let's be honest the character might be barbara might be named barbara gordon but it's not barbara gordon it's nowhere close to Barbara Gordon. The only thing that, that I probably will watch Barbara Gordon, I mean, the Batgirl movie for, is because they say J.K. Simmons is returning and they said Ben Affleck as Batman is returning. Okay. All right. <laughs> I guess I'm going to have to get up in that movie because I like J.K. Simmons. I like Ben Affleck as Batman. So, I mean, then, you know, DC wasted both of them. So, I guess I'll watch it just for that. But God, I it's gonna be really hard to sit there and believe that Leslie Grace is Barbara Gordon, you know. But let me get on the fact that even past this movie, I don't like the entire thing that's going on with Barbara Gordon or um, the whole Batgirl thing phenomenon that's been happening these past ten years. Um, because okay. Batgirl came out, she was in Batman Family Adventures, and she pulled up in a little bit of, of side, in side stories, and appeared in Detective Comics, and Batman every once in a while, or whatever, 
But, you know, DC never gave her a solo run, which, shame. Shame that Barbara Gordon never got a solo run until 2011. But, even more so shameful is, okay, they had they had Batgirl, which was based off of the legendary Yvette Crane, who um, played Batgirl in um, the Batman 66 show with Adam West and Bart Wall. Um, I have have no problem i thought she was a, a nice addition to the team and i liked her little costume i thought it was really cute to be honest um and i liked the little origin of barbara gordon going to a party and dressed and found a batman suit and you know wanted to dress as batman and then kind of crime happened and you know she took a liking to it you know <laughs> so that was pretty that's pretty cool to be honest um and that girl was there in and out um some people liked her some people didn't because of course you know the original that girl kathy kane no not kathy kane but um betty kane you know they they wrote her out and then they gave they gave um but they they made that girl one word and created barbara gordon of course she was pretty cool she did her little thing um she was in Washington, D.C. for a while. She went on a date with Superman. I mean, she was a little bit older than Dick Grayson at the time anyway. And she had a little niche for her, for her own section. And I had no problem with that. But, you know, after years of being Batgirl, D.C. kind of didn't really know what to do with the character. And they had her retire being Batgirl. Okay, cool. Sometimes you're not meant to be a superhero forever. Not every character is meant to be a superhero forever. It is what it is. Um, so, Alan Moore decided to create a story called The Killing Joke. And, hey, they're not doing anything with Barbara Gordon. And she already retired as Batgirl at the time. Okay, cool. Barbara visits her dad. Um, her dad and they talk about family stuff and the joker pulls up on him shoots her in the spine and uh, you know the rest is kind of history where she becomes paralyzed and of course you know people want to try to use that as bridging but newsflash you dumb dumbs barbara gordon was always going to be in danger she is the daughter or sometimes adoptive daughter or niece, depending on how y'all want to, which continuity we want to go through. Because of, uh, originally, um, I believe Barbara was just um, Jim Gordon's um, niece. When his brother and his wife died, they took um, they took Barbara, and and she became their adoptive daughter. But it is what it is with that one. But like I said, <laughs> you know, Barbara Gordon having any connection with Jim Gordon who is the commissioner of Gotham Police was always going to be in danger female or male because remember uh, James Gordon Jr. was in danger in year one like it's not like Jim's kids ain't never been used as a plot device before they're literally the kids of Commissioner Gordon of course they were going to be in danger the only reason why it's impactful and the irony is because she retired from Batgirl, Joker don't know that she's Batgirl, and tragedy still beheld her with the Joker. I mean, they live in fucking Gotham City, for God's sake. Even if she wasn't Batgirl, she was always going to have a potential target on her head. I don't know why everybody, I'm getting real tired of everybody like, oh my God, is this so disgusting what they did to her and stuff like that. What? What, what, what's this, what's disgusting? It's for story value. Yeah, it was a shock because who would have thought that Batgirl would have got in danger because she's such an, uh, an, a popular character that even when Barbara Gordon retired, you would have never thought that tragedy would have beheld her. But it did. It happened. Get over it. I'm really getting tired of everybody getting squirmish about the killing joke. It happened. It happened. It is what it is. Who cares? She got shot. The Joker took pictures. That's terrible. Yes, I get it. But she couldn't be Batgirl anymore. 
but she had to deal with the trauma of losing her legs, almost losing her life, and never being able to walk again. Okay, cool. We went through the story of her struggling and going through that kind of stuff. And they built the character up into Oracle, which Barbara Gordon is way better as Oracle than she ever been. And everybody was like, well, yeah, but no, no, there is no buts because that's the whole point of tragedy. You know what I'm saying? You really think that, you, think about it. As a, if people, um, a person who was reading this book who was par paraplegic sees a character like Barbara Gordon was like, oh, well, damn, she got shot in the spine and she said, I'm not going to let this defeat me. I'm a change and I'm a come, I'm become a better hero than I was as Batgirl. And what did she become? She became, she became Oracle, the DC's best informational book, um, booker in the world to the point where even the Justice League needs her. Suicide Squad needs her. The government uses her, needs her. Like, there is no hard thing. Like, there's nothing wrong with Barbara Gordon as Oracle. I don't like her time has passed as Batgirl. Okay, cool. So we moved on to, then we move on to um, Huntress trying to be Batgirl, but that didn't work out. So we're not even going to even mention that, that little brief moment. And then we go to our new Batgirl, which I think is the best Batgirl. The perfect character for Batgirl is Cassandra Kane, Lady Shiva, and David Kane's um, daughter and Batman adoptive daughter, Cassandra Kane, aka um, spoiler, aka Black Bat. You know, she was the first Batgirl to actually give Batgirl a solo run, and I have a lot of them. And I enjoyed the I enjoyed Cassandra as Batgirl. You have a mute character, and she's Asian, so you already got diversity right there without even thinking. And she's been trained to be a killer since she was born. You know what I'm saying? She did her first killing at the age of eight, and when she realized that was wrong, she ran away and ran away to Gotham City. And when um, No Man's Land happened. You know, she became an ally to Batman and took over the role of Batgirl. And then Batman and Barbara Gordon mentored her. And she took over as Batgirl. Everything was fine with that. But yet, DC ignores Cassandra all the damn time. Pretend like she doesn't exist. Pretend like she doesn't have a story. Like, for instance, like you're doing a Batgirl movie right now. And it, you race swap Barbara Gordon from from um, white to Colum Co Co um, Columbia well um, or black Tino I, I, I don't even I forgot I, I forgot what I said about Leslie Grace and the other one so you, you you get what I'm saying you guys are just gonna have to go back and watch that movie I mean that video so instead of choosing the obvious character who is diverse already you have to take you have to take that take a white character and make them another damn race because reasons and then you claim that oh cassandra kane's not a popular character she, yeah she actually was a popular character just like barbara gordon as oracle is popular you don't understand your own damn readership yeah bruce tim had batgirl in the in um batman the animated series but in the comic books and everything outside of the um, entertainment thing, Barbara Gordon, I mean, when it wasn't TV or movies, Barbara Gordon was Oracle. I don't understand why y'all felt the need to change that. And then you had a Batgirl that was already, you know, that was already diverse like you have a mute you have a mute character who's struggling how to learn how to talk and a killer who can literally look at people's bodies and read their body language and predict what they're doing and can even give killing blows if she really wants to but yet doesn't want to kill so it's trained by barbara gordon and and um batman on how to be be a real human girl and not be the assassin that she was created to be hmm that seems more interesting than, oh, yeah, um, Jim Gordon's daughter 
decides that she wants to help Batman fight crime and become Batgirl. Okay, cool. That was fine back in the day, but now it's just like, all right, what else is there special about Batgirl? Because let's be honest, we didn't know much about Barbara Gordon being that book smart or that tech, that tech heavy smart until after she got shot and they, they retooled her as Oracle. I mean, yeah, I knew she was plenty smart or whatever, but who knew that she could do so much with computers when she became Oracle? And then, of course, y'all took that. Y'all took Cassandra Cain off of that, um, made her evil for no damn reason, which kind of destroyed a little bit of her likability for, for fans because they were like, that doesn't even make any damn logical sense because y'all wanted to shake up the formula for the character. You ain't got to shake up nothing. All you had to do was just leave the fucking character alone and let her damn grow. But no, you couldn't do that. You couldn't even do that. So then you said, oh, okay, cool. Let's have Batman get killed. And if he ever gets killed, Cassandra is supposed to give the bat suit over to Stephanie Brown because reasons. And then she become, and then Stephanie becomes Black Bat. And then y'all rebooted her when the New 52 came. And then that's the that's the definite crux of it is the New 52 for me. I mean, don't get me wrong. The New 52 Batgirl run was spectacular. But the fact that Barbara Gordon got her, le her fucking legs back and then DC act like there were no other Batgirls at, during the time that Barbara Gordon was out of commission. That doesn't even make no damn logical sense, to be honest. Where's Cassandra? Where's um, Stephanie? Neither one, which it should have been one of them two characters taking over and not Barbara Gordon. And then you explain, oh, well, she got experimental stem cell surgery and a chip in her in her spine to help her walk again. Are you fucking kidding me with that shit? And she still hasn't got over the trauma. She been got over the trauma of, jo of what Joker did to her years ago. Why are we bringing the shit back up? Why are we bringing the shit back up? That's what I'm talking about. The New 52 retreaded old shit too. Where people like me had already read these stuff, had already seen Barbara grow and change. And here y'all go rebooting and starting the shit all over again. But then saying that some of the stuff in pre-New 52 still happened. That, that don't even make the damn sense God gave, to be honest. You make it make sense. You make it make sense. Like, damn, can can we can we stop with the nonsense? And then, not even that do, during that time, Bruce Tim's fetishes for a Batgirl grew even more, where he wanted Bruce and Barbara to be a couple, and apparently they were a couple in the DC animated universe. And she even got pregnant by Bruce at the same time that she was with Dick Grayson, who is Bruce's adoptive son. You nasty slut. And yeah, th there's been an underlining thing of Batgirl having a crush on Batman, but that was because she didn't know that Bruce Wayne was Batman. When she knew that, that crush ended. But no, Bruce Tim can't seem to fucking let it go. And it perviates a lot of the DCAU. And it, it makes her, it, it just, it makes her look like a slut, to be honest. Like, you were with Dick Grayson. And that's why that's why I can't really have people when people be like, oh, Barbara Gordon and Dick Grayson. No, 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 no. Bruce Tim killed that a long time ago, to be honest. Bruce Tim killed that a long time ago. Because remember, he even brought it back in the Killing Joke movie where, oh, Barbara Gordon and Bruce slept together with each other on the damn roof the night before she quit being Batgirl. And uh, a few a few days before she gets shot in the spine. What? What? That don't even make no damn logical sense. Like, what, what are we doing right now, you know? Oh, shit. Like, what's happening here? You can't sit up here and have Batman and Batgirl together in other forms of media or even whatever and then 
tell me like, oh, but Barbara Gordon and Dick Grayson belong together. No. And that's another thing. They've been passing Barbara around like she's a fucking pair of, pair of draws. Like, <laughs> in, in, in almost every media, she is with some member of the Bat family. Either she's with Bruce or she's with Dick or she's with Jason or she's with Tim. And I'm talking about as a couple. That is freaking weird. That is weird. Why would I want her to be with, uh, I think, and there was occasion where she was with Luke Fox too. So again, but at least Luke Fox is not one of one of um, Batman's children. I mean, yeah, what the next thing y'all gonna do? Y'all gonna have her dating the signal? I mean, it's weird. It's creepy. It is creepy as hell that y'all sit up there and think that it's cute that Barbara Gordon is being passed around like she's some goddamn draws that y'all can just slip on and slip off when y'all get ready. That's not how this shit works. She's a damn person. And she shouldn't be, she shouldn't be 500 different people's lovers. Especially coming from the Bat family, you know? I just find it weird that they're doing, that they're doing something like that. Like, it's, it is weird, to be honest. <laughs> like, no, I don't want Barbara Gordon nowhere near the Bat family. No, get that. The only one they didn't, they didn't push is, um, got darn, um... Damian Wayne. Surprised they didn't try to age him up and be like, oh, Barbara Gordon should go with him next. You know, it it is just weird, to be honest. I don't get it. I really don't get it. The the treatment of this character has been has been retarded. And then, then not to mention, after the new 52 run, then they decided let's do the Burnside run where they de-aged Barbara Gordon and they made her go to the city um, in Gotham City called Burnside and then they gave her cosplay bullshit costume. The fuck? Why she why she wearing why she wearing a, a damn a, a raincoat? I mean no a jacket, leggings, and rain boots as a costume. And then people are like, oh it's so cute. No, it's not cute, it's impractical. You want to talk about costumes being impractical? That's impractical. Yeah, if this was Barbara Gordon's first run at being Batgirl, sure, sure. But this comes after, after Batgirl New Fifty Two run, and we've seen the Batgirl New Fifty Two costume. That costume looks amazing compared to whatever the fuck that that crap was. I mean, if it was for Stephanie Brown, sure. I believe something. I can believe that Stephanie would wear something like that because that's her personality. But Barbara is supposed to be this highly intelligent woman, and there's no way in hell she would wear some shit like that. And even recently in the in the um the Fear State, they put a variation of that costume back on her. That costume doesn't work, DC. Stop trying to make that fucking terrible cosplay bullshit costume work. It doesn't work. She, Barbara Gordon is a grown woman. She shouldn't be wearing some bullshit that a teenager, a teen, a teen girl came up with. She really shouldn't. That costume's on a borderline of why Miss Marvel's costume looks lame as hell. It's not attractive. It's not appealing. And yet y'all still gonna try to make that shit work. Come on. Come on now. We done went through three different women as Batgirl. And you had the perfect one with Cassandra, and yet you constantly choose to ignore them and keep talking about um, diversity and inclusion. But you ignore your major, your major diverse Batgirl because we want to keep, we want to keep up with Barbara Gordon because reasons, you know. And it's weird. It is weird to be honest. Like Barbara is good, has had her time. You know, you ever seen that? You ever seen that mom or that dad that they're old, right? But they, you know, they, they're still youthful a little bit, but they want to try so bad to, to keep up with the young folks to prove that I can keep up with the young folks too. No, 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 no. You're old. Sit down. Sit down. Let the let the young girls have it. That's what it feels like with Barbara Gordon. It feels like they're trying to put her in a tank top and booty shorts and be like, 
look, guys, I'm still young and hip. And it's just like, no, Barbara. No, 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 Barbara. Sit, sit your ass down and go behind that computer and become a good a, and um, do a good informational book, um, booker for us. Thank you. And I know some people were like, well, okay, but why does she, why does she, um, why she don't, um, cause I had said, I want her to lose her legs again because it doesn't make, it, it don't make no logical sense that this girl put on, have experimental drugs placed in her and a chip in her back to let her walk again when she was doing fine as Oracle. That's all I'm saying. She's doing, she was doing fine as Oracle and it just doesn't make logical sense why you would change that now what would be the purpose of changing that nothing it'll be a, it's a waste of time to change what works for the character that's all i'm saying her being oracle works i don't want her the reason why i don't want her to have her legs is because i don't want her in the batgirl suit again i don't want to see barbara in the batgirl suit at all no more I, I really don't. I want her out of the Batgirl suit. And her losing her legs means that she can't ever be Batgirl again. And that's what I want. I, I don't want Barbara Gordon as Batgirl anymore. Like I said, the perfect person is Cassandra. And like that, they have this, this backup issue called, um, of the Batgirls in every fucking mm -hmm. Batman book it seemed like and you just like first off the artwork is ugly just like the fucking Harley Quinn book is fucking ugly and it's stupid it's it's child it's, it looked like it's kitty friendly which is dumb you have Cassandra who's a who's an ex assassin I'm sorry no no read the first solo Batgirl run with Cassandra Kane in there no you're not about to sit up here and make her like this little kitty child friendly bull crap for girls it's too late too late for that that character is a serious character. Don't don't pacify her. For Stephanie Brown, sure. But she should be spoiler anyway. I'm just being honest. She should be spoiler anyway. You shouldn't, you know, make her this character. You know? I, I want Barbara Gordon to um to actually, you know, mentor them. And that's fine. That's great. She can definitely mentor. Um, Cassandra and Stephanie but I also want her not to be able to get back in the Batgirl suit ever again like I want the I want a storyline mm -hmm. where finally all of that all of the pressure on the chip and the spine finally give way and she back in that chair again sure do sure do I want her back in the chair and I don't want her and Dick Grayson back together. I really don't. Those are the two things that I that I don't I don't want to see Barbara Gordon back as Batgirl. And I don't want to see her and Dick Grayson together. And then my thing is, y'all always talking about um people don't want to give these diverse characters a chance, but Cassandra was pulled off very well, actually. She was actually pretty done really well. And it's kind of funny when they do Batgirl things and everybody was like, well, what about Cassandra Cain? Because most, a lot of people are familiar with the Killing Joke story. Even people who don't read comic books, they're like, why is Batgirl, why is Barbara Gordon walking again? I don't know because the, the, uh, the writers thought that it was just too controversial to have Barbara Gordon um, be, um, you know, be Oracle because it's problematic. Because the Joker hurt her so bad. The Joker hurt a lot of people. He's an agent of chaos. I'm sorry. But what makes Barbara Gordon such an amazing character when she's not Batgirl is because she overcame that and become, became something better. And even when she's in a wheelchair, she's proven that she's not as use, useless as you think. She can still fight. She still trains. She still does... She still does um, gymnastics. She just can't use her legs. So, I mean, what's wrong with that? I, I have no problem with that. I'm just saying, I just don't like the direction that DC's been going with Batgirl of late. And now we have this movie that just like, oh, God. Instead, you could have just used the Asian, char the Asian character, Asian mute girl, 
Cassandra Kane, but you had messed up Cassandra in Birds of Prey and the Fabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn. And you messed up the team that Barbara Gordon is a founder of. Like, if any movie... If, there, if there's another movie that needs to be retconned out of existence from the DCEU, it needs to be Birds of Prey and the Fabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn, Josh Wheaton's Justice League, of course, and the Suicide Squad. I mean, not the Suicide Squad, but the but Suicide Squad, the first Suicide Squad movie. Every other movie can stay in there. Well, um, the theatrical cut of Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice, that one needs to go. That one, that one needs to go. And you keep the Ultimate Edition of that, and you, you should be fine. Because I, I, I don't understand how Margot Robbie clearly ignored um, Gotham City Sirens. Like, you're talking about, I, I fought really hard for a female empowerment movie. For a character that's not even a fucking hero. So Gotham City Sirens would have made more logical sense because with Batgirl, you could have introduced the Birds of Prey correctly. But you didn't. And then you race swapped a lot of the characters and either made them old or stupid. You had a, a strong all power all all female team that wasn't pandering at all, and yet you screwed that up. You know, <laughs> it's just kind of crazy how everything goes with Barbara Gordon, to be honest. I, I just, I, 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 my beef with, with Batgirl really is how the treatment, how DC has been treating the mantle and how they've been disrespecting Cassandra and um, Barbara Gordon. I, I know some people are like, what about Stephanie? No, Stephanie was good at spoiler. She will always be spoiler to me. I don't really see her as Batgirl. Sure, they had runs where she was Batgirl, and I thought it was okay, but you could have literally put spoiler on there and called it a day, to be honest, because I was waiting for a redemption of Cassandra more so than seeing Stephanie as, you know, because no offense, I, I think Stephanie is a good supporting character. I don't think she uh, is a good standalone character where she needs her own book. I'm just going to be honest with you. Like, that's just the real truth. To be honest, like, you know, you can like it or not, but that that's how I feel about the character. And I'm really concerned about the movie because it doesn't seem like they're going to treat Barbara Gordon with with respect anyway. Because Leslie Grace, she ain't, she ain't, she ain't, she ain't it. Especially that Halloween, that Halloween costume of her trying to be that girl, baby. You, you too skinny. You too skinny. You ain't got no boobs, no body. I don't know who the hell you supposed to be, but you ain't you ain't Barbara Gordon, especially somebody I'm supposed to take serious. And then you making her officer Barbara Gordon. Nah, no thanks. I, I'm I'm good. I'm fresh out of give a fuck to be honest. You know, I'm tired of everybody talking about oh we should just give it a chance. It's the best action. No, they, no, it's not. They purposely went out there and looked for anybody that wasn't white. You know, how hard it was it to find a beautiful white woman that had had a body. That looked like she could have been Batgirl. Not that hard, but of course, you you know, there's always excuses. But like I said, the only way I watch that movie, if it's confirmed that J.K. Simmons and Ben Affleck is in there, if they're not in there, then I have no qualms of seeing the movie because I don't I don't care because I already know you're probably going to butcher the character. So it is what it is. But yeah, those are my that's my issue with Batgirl. The mistreatment of Batgirl, the mistreatment and misconception um, of Barbara Gordon, and definitely the disrespect of Cassandra Kane, aka the the best Batgirl, the number one Batgirl ever. I'm just being honest. <laughs> Those are my thoughts. Tell me what you guys think. Comment below, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.